Okay, so welcome everyone. Welcome to the results of the Dairy Hackathon. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for being with us. My name is Rafa Hochflitz. I work as a consultant in agriculture and I supported some of the organizing partners in developing this hackathon. Um, so where are we now? It's about 20 hours later after we kicked off and I'm going to take you to the process a little bit to see what we've done in those past 28 hours. Yesterday at 12, we had Betty Martin from the board of the Rabobank here tell us about some challenges in agriculture and food, future challenges and challenges that are facing the sector right now. After that, we zoomed in on the dairy sector. What's happening there? What types of machinery? What types of data? And what would we like to work on in this hackathon? We formulated five challenges for the participants to work on. Some on data integration, some on an analysis, some on visualization, and a few others. We had a couple of participants, about eight, but eight very good ones, stemming from different backgrounds, and they came up with a singular product, a presentation. They were presenting their results shortly, and after that, the jury will give their feedback, as well as hand them over the winning prize, because we can already tell you that they were the only participating team, so they've won. Please give. We have three people presenting the results. First Sylvia, then Archana, and then Gerald. So please give Sylvia a big hand. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, thank you, everybody, um, for being here. And uh, happy cows. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, uh, the dimension of farmers, but uh, being a farmer is a challenge every day. Because every day they wake up without knowing whether a cow might get sick, whether uh, they potentially get sick the next day. And uh, despite the collection of data that we are already uh, having and collecting this the, in, the, in the last years, we, can't we couldn't still do anything to prevent this. So by our product, we are trying to see whether the data can be friendly or friends or enemies. Can we do that? I mean, people, farmers are specialized in what they do and they don't have time to think, uh, oh God, should we, should we do this? Should we do that? We, they want easy answer, f easy answer to, uh, and have solutions to deal with their daily tasks. But also, um, we are keep on doing the same problems, um, the same mistakes, because even if we're um, collecting data, we are not capable to know whether um, to, to look back at the mistakes we've done six weeks ago and, and come to the conclusion that we may do something else to avoid this problem. We are talking about preventions. And we're talking also about disconnected market because the reality of farmers is a, is a thing that exists and we know it, but um, startups, innovators, it still represents a really uh, little appetizing market and we should take it into consideration. So what are we offering today? Data, innovation can do a lot for them, can improve their lifestyles incredibly with just such a little effort. We can create new opportunities for improving milk, efficient, milk production and efficiencies, but also to prevent sicknesses or waste uh, of our products and its quality. We can also, we are also concerned about the happiness of the cows, because in the end, if cows are happy, also the product of the cows, it's going to be better and uh, they're going to be, uh, it's going to be sustainable uh, on, a, on an ecosystem point of view, but also in terms of cost efficiency and revenues. Happy farmers. Well, um, we are also concerned about that because they are busy they have things to do. So we are creating and designing a product which is easy, simple, and friendly to use and to understand. 
we are providing solutions for working better. Let's see how we did it. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, I'll walk you through the data analysis process. So what happened yesterday was we spoke with the farmers and we got some data. So uh, I'll give more insight about the kind of data that we got. So the first, uh, we had information about the farmer himself. Like what kind of a farmer is he? Is he innovative? Is he a thinker? Is he a doer? So uh, we made a list of all the profile information from the farmer. And why is this relevant? Is this relevant because if he's an innovative farmer, he would like to explore new opportunities. So if there's a new product in the market, he would be interested to buy it. So there are some correlations and some recommendations that we can offer to the uh, farmer based on the data we have about him. The second thing that we observed is there is a lot of data about the land. The farmers, they use the land to grow grass and maize, which is used to feed the animals themselves. So the quality of this will affect the quality of the food that the animals have. And it is important to have a high, good uh, production. And what we could measure was uh, there was the land dimensions, how many hectares is the field, and how much of fertilizer was used. But all this is uh, in the mind of the farmer. This, me this can be measured. Like if the size of the field is 10 hectares, there is a certain amount of fertilizers that can be used on that field. You don't have to apply more to get more. So you can get optimal results. So if you make all the metrics and try to identify what relates to the field and to the farmer and to the animal, you get a clear picture how things can be correlated. So this is what we did. And from the animal perspective, we tried to see what kind of animals does the farmer have, breed A, breed B of a cow, and how many of those breeds. So in order to have an optimal milk production, you could have a good combination of the different breeds of certain numbers. So this is the data analysis part that we have been doing. And uh, there was also the sensor data that was available. So there were sensors on the fields. And why is the sensor data important? So uh, the sensors attached to the animals can give indication about the health of the animal. Suppose the animal is not having a good dietary habit, is eating slow or eating fast, this can be automatically measured in a matter of seconds and notified to the farmer, okay, there is something wrong. There is something to be looked into. It can help as more preventive measures than actually making the animal sick and then later curing it. Uh, so the measures that might be important from an animal perspective are the eating habits, the movement of the animal. If the animal is uh, not moving, is sick, sits in one place, something is wrong. The temperature of the milk, the type of food that the animal is eating, is it eating a lot, is it eating less? So all these can be sent directly to the farmer to get a direct impact and notify the farmer. So what do we bring? We offer power into the hands of the farmers. And this is our app, it's called Happy Cow. So how does it work? Suppose you're a farmer, you wake up one day, and then you open the app, and then you try to see, what should I do today? Should I cut the grass first, or is it going to rain, so should I do it faster? Should I feed which animal first? Is some animal sick? Should I go and attend to that animal? And it gives a prioritized list of events in the day of a farmer. And along with that, it gives more analytics and the reasoning behind it. Because sometimes you just give suggestions to people, they don't accept it. So you have to give a reasoning. Why do you need to do this? And that is also available in detail. So you have an overview first, and then you click on something, you get a more detailed explanation. Uh, so this is our app. It's the Moo Analytics. It's uh, fun. with the, We played with the name of the cows and the analytics. So um, what happens, uh, yeah, Nicaragua will explain more about this. Thank you. Right, so let's talk, let's talk about the business model. Um, right now we have sensors in the cows, um, and, but then there's a problem that they can't be understood or they can't provide enough insight. So our moon analytics will analyze that, provide um, predictive analytics, that can really help the farmer in real time what they have to do. And then after that, uh, the, the data that will be generated 
will then be can can then be sold as well to um, to scientific community for companies who are creating the feed to understand what are the things that they need to put in their um, in the fertilizer or for the feed itself and it can also be used by other farmers and it can be a collaborative effort to uh, to crowdsource more ways on how to solve the problems that they are having with their uh, with their cows but what uh, is innovative here is the focus that we put on the farmer themselves that they own the data what we provide is the platform okay and we are and we think that with um, with happy cow application we can provide a more efficient uh, costing uh, right now this is the costing for for the expenses of a dairy farmer per one liter of milk and most are being used for the feeds and others are for the robots and overall maintenance and then a few for the manual labor but if we provide a more efficient way of handling the cows then we can possibly save more man hours per week because less cows will be sick um, and then maybe if we know the right combination for pesticides and the amount that we will put on the soil to provide a better feed which can eventually lead to better milk uh, production then that can also provide us more savings and also uh, possibly less maintenance cost if we uh, make everything more efficient and uh, great uh, sorry, savings in costing will provide a lot of uh, more money for the farmer and yeah we the team is actually uh, perfect to do this um, happy cow application we have experiences uh, personally for me I studied masters in food innovation and product design together with Ada Archana is uh, from IBM uh, and she graduated in analytics and uh, Sylvia is working in Philips Healthcare and um, our data analytics team can you, you can also stand up please <laughs> yeah that they are the ones analyzing the data overnight <laughs> thank you and also Marcel for the service design and Ada is also studying food innovation product design with me right um, but more than that more than the more efficient savings we can also provide more income for uh, additional income for the farmer because the data can then be utilized by companies and other farmers and also the scientific community and they own the data so they also have the part whenever we sell the data to to them and the next step right now we are looking at having this platform for farmers but we will try to develop and innovate our application to provide what the, what they need uh, like real-time data and uh, it will create more uh, predictive and prescriptive prescriptive analytics applications which they can then download in our platform and after that we will also uh, eventually this is our goal to create a tech savvy farmers that they are not afraid of technology anymore and they see this as their uh, partner in solving and making life efficient and their cows happier and there's more opportunities uh, because right now we are only looking at Netherlands who has 17,000 dairy farms but um, uh, globally there's still uh, 270 million cows which uh, shows a lot of opportunity not just here in Netherlands but globally and we are looking at this uh, type of revenue projection uh, until reaching 4 million <laughs> by the fifth year first three years we tried to penetrate the Netherlands market but then uh, we saw that Germany is the top uh, milk producer in Europe so we can also apply this technology there and then eventually move to the US which is uh, the biggest milk producer in the world right now and that's it um, with happy cows we also want to create a happy farm thank you and have a moontastic afternoon to all of you Thank you. So um, now uh, the business concept put us in a challenging position because 
it was just said how easy everything would be and how uh, many things we can promise you. And I think in a future, and with a lot of effort maybe, that can be true, but this all starts with the data. And, and, and <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, what uh, got us interested in the challenge, and with us, I meet the, the data analytics, so I will present them because it was not in the slides. Ever and Timo are both cybernetic engineers from the University of Stuttgart, and they um, are very good coders and they know a lot about mathematical models. I uh, have a PhD in bioinformatics, and now I'm translationing to data analysis, so I um, like to explore data, visualize data, look what, what stories the data has to tell. Um, and we love the idea of this smart farming, so helping the farmers make better decisions through data. And after looking at these two data sets that they presented, the milking data and the DMS data, we have some good news and not so good news for you. And the good news is you alre already have amazing data. And this is really, I think, even better news than what you think. So I come from the healthcare uh, that were data is really, it's like gold, yes? I mean, it's, everybody wants to have this insight. Everybody wants to learn something from it. And there are companies selling it and you are just acquiring acquiring it. And I don't think you're afraid of technology. It's just, you, you're missing the link to the people that can analyze it. Um, the other good thing is uh, there are already good people that can be very interested on that. So there are a lot of people that come from um, from an informatic or for a scientific background, and they find the idea very attractive. So I think everybody has a good connection to, to agriculture. So um, as they say, uh, they said it's uh, lots that can be done with little effort. I don't think it's little effort, but I do th think it's a lot. There is lots of potential because it's not exploited yet. So there is a lot of data in the world, but the agricultural data is not exploited yet. The not so good news is the data are complex and as you told us noisy but they are really noisy so there has to be some time and some investment uh, on analysts in order to to get some insight and without more i will just tell you what we did with the data so um we i have an example of one problem i don't want to say problem i would say the challenge that we have from the big, the big data so the big data was the white from lily about the the milkings and it was a, fi a big file of about one gigabyte uh, with eight million rows. We were just told that it's just a very small part of the actual data. And uh, Timo, who is an excellent programmer, spent around 10 hours of <laughs> programming in order to get the data in a form that we can start making anal and models, analysis predictions. And we were there just half an hour ago. So um, <laughs> in another setting, not in a hackathon, you would have a data science team working on that for one week in order to have the data everybody wants to have. So thanks, Timo, for all the effort. And uh, he also has a lot of uh, insights and questions on how would it be better to prepare the data to give the analyst to save time on that. So we can discuss on that uh, afterwards. Um, the good news is that now we can load it in five minutes <laughs> from all the work. So. Uh, it's, it's done. Uh, and we can load it and access information like how many milkings we have, um, and uh, what's the number of inflammatory cells for milkings where metastasis was, uh, mastitis was uh, flagged and, or not. So this data is now ready uh, for us to explore it, make correlations, make models, everything, but we didn't come to actually doing that. What uh, we did <laughs> was uh, taking a look at other data. This data was not only challenging because it was very, it had very different parameters. It was only so challenging because it was in Dutch. So <laughs> thanks for the help of the <laughs> DMS for helping translating. Um, and I, I have some insights that I don't quite understand because I'm not a farmer and I don't speak Dutch, but maybe um, we can discuss it together. So. What we thought was showing you one very simple uh, analysis on, uh, that 
maybe can motivate you or can show you what this can do in the future. So we were talking to milk farmers and they told us different um, measures on how yield or um, success is measured. And one of them was um, how much uh, milk can I produce with one kilogram of feed? I think there is a D, T where that D should be. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we wanted to say, okay, if we check the farmers, the, the list of farms we have, which have the best milk to feed ratio, can we say then what are the parameters in the feed that gives you the best ratio? So we can do this because we have the very different data sets. We have um, data sets about the milk, about the feed, and about all these parameters in the feed. And there were lots of feed variables. I think it was 70 something, <laughs> uh, most of which we didn't understand. Still, I took them old uh, and uh, started analyzing. Um, what I have here is the list of farm uh, measurements. And I will just tell you it's a simplified data distribution. So each point is a measurement for a farm. And it's a measurement taking into account all 70 variables that I told you about. What I did here is I, I took the dimension uh, down in which I, and then I can plot it in just 2D. But here you have all 70 parameters there. And how the parameters are playing a role, you can see here, these are the five most relevant parameters that explain the spread in the points. So what these lines tell you is points that are over here have a high mice, this. <laughs> I think it's protein in mice. <laughs> um, think, uh, Points that are here have a more of fresh grass in the summer. I see. Even my, my Dutch is getting better. <laughs> uh, and so on. So the, the uh, upper ones have more grass than the yes. So, um, and the next thing we looked at is which farmer has the best milk to feed ratio. Yeah. And these are the uh, brown feed. Yeah. So, the, these brown points, they are the ones that we extracted the ratio before, and these ones have the best milk ratio. And superimposing both, and we can come to the conclusion that the, the most decisive parameter for that, among others, is the protein in mice. I don't know if this makes sense. This is the point where a data analyst go to the farmer and say, does this make sense? <laughs> um, but this is what we can do from a completely blind study. Yes, I, I, don't buy, I don't assume anything. I don't even know what this means. So it's a complete blind stu study, and you let the data talk to you. And that's it. So this is like a, a toy uh, project experiment of uh, one night of work of these two guys that should also come here. Because uh, if you have questions about the data, we would be very glad to uh, answer it, whatever. So, are there any questions? Well, first and foremost, thank you, Vera, for a good presentation. Um, some excellent insights of data you actually don't understand. Uh, very impressive. I'm sure some people can confirm these relations, if they make sense or not. Just looking at the audience quickly. No questions, remarks? No? If you don't yeah. have questions, Timo for sure has some suggestions about the data, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, may maybe I should talk to the guy that actually compiled the data to uh, comma-separated files. This is just hell, really. <laughs> just don't, don't do that. Get, can we, Vic, it's uh, one of your colleagues. Can you maybe comment on Timo? I will blame my colleagues, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything. And, and then buy him a coffee for actually doing it. So I, I, I had something to work on, which is great. <laughs> OK. I will buy you a coffee afterwards. Uh, that's for, yeah, that's for sure. No, it's a nice presentation. I think I, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things that, that I've seen before in that sense, also what you uh, uh, have as an idea. But uh, some new details, and I'd like to uh, elaborate on that afterwards, I think. Yeah. Sure. I mean, what I have to comment is that I mean, I come from a scientific uh, background, so in science, maybe we exaggerate, but uh, 
from a data set that was maybe one hundredth of this, we took seven months on having results that we believed on. So uh, for this data set, I wouldn't mind to be working on one year, really, to get some models out of this. Really, it's uh, <laughs> we worked a couple of hours on that. We worked uh, tired and under time pressure, but it's, I mean, we are very motivated to see what, what can be extracted with this, with this kind of information. And, and there is apparently lots uh, to do. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We have another question here and here. Um, yeah, I'll start with you. I can translate yeah, for you if you we want. We are going to okay. talk, uh, Paula. <laughs> I'm uh, very charmed. Thank you. All right, thanks. Oh, so thank you uh, for, the, for the great presentation. I think you did a great job. Just a little bit of technical uh, <coughs> question. That is, uh, you started what I thought was a kind of hypothesis that you said that we want to explain uh, feed to milk ratio. Huh? That was a question. And, uh, and, and later in the solutions, I see that you more do the blind analysis and say, let the data speak for itself. Is it because the first anal uh, analysis, a kind of regression analysis, didn't give you s good results? And then no. you switch to this yeah. method? Or did you start with this? I think it's uh, principal components. Uh, exactly, this. it's a principal yeah. component analysis. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> so, yes. Um, no, I. I took the milk, the milk to feed ratio as a measure to, to optimize, just to, to distinguish these brown points. So this is the only thing I did with the milk to ratio is was to mark these points. Well, you did the combination then? I just took it. I said, which are the best ones? Okay. Mm -hmm. And just plotted them. And then we look which parameters define them. But, um, but I didn't know which were where. So we, I just uh, did the whole analysis and then I said, okay, which is the ten best 10% 10 of, mm -hmm. of the farms. Mm -hmm. And then we saw it, they were there. Mm -hmm. And it's also that you do this because of the noisy variables, so that it's very difficult to get predictive results? Or uh? Two reasons. One, um, <laughs> academic one, that I would uh, tell a client, yes, it's because we have lots of dimensions and you have to reduce them. The very honest answer is this. This is the script I knew how best would work, so I said, I have two hours to do it, I will know the first analysis I know. So, <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions for the team? No? If there are not, I'm going to ask you, uh, Marcel. You worked a lot with the participants, uh, coaching them. Could you tell us a little bit about the process you had the last 28 hours? Uh, the process we did. Um, actually, uh, when we got the data set, it was quite difficult to read, even for me in Dutch. Um, so what we did, we, we just explored and tried to figure out uh, what was a useful hypothesis to, su to see what's going on in the data, uh, to see what uh, is actually useful, what is, how can we make uh, the big thing smaller and be able to show uh, the stuff here on screen today. Um, after that, we kind of uh, hooked up with each other, like, okay, the data scientists were working with each other. Uh, I was working on some UI stuff. Uh, we are working on a business case, so we each did our own thing, and we came together uh, today to uh, collect and to mix everything up again. And that ended up here on screen. So. If not, then uh, we're going to ask for some feedback from our judges. We have three judges today. Uh, Ruth Hörne, the Director Agriculture from the Rabobank. Mark Havermans, a high-tech dairy farmer from the Netherlands. And Ethan Herman, who works for SoftLayer, an IBM company in cloud technology, if I say it correctly. Um, we're going to start with the guys we forget sometimes, the farmers. So Mark, please take the stage first and share your thoughts with us. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm impressed um, to hear that people that, well, don't really know what a farmer does, I think, uh, picked up so much in such little time. Uh, you really understood that a happy farmer is what we want to be. And you also understood that happy cows is what we want to have. Um, 
You will understand if we don't have sick cows that we make money and that we still have a living. And that we can automize everything if the cows are healthy. So I think you exactly understand what we are looking for. We are looking for technology and for smart farming that can predict what we have to do and that can tell us what to do before we get in trouble. So, very good. And of course, now I'm very curious, when can we uh, have the tools you're talking about? Because that's, of course, the next question. Uh, also, I am um, the question we have as... Uh, as farmers, we have a lot of data. At the moment, everybody can access our data. And sometimes I wonder, should we give them away like we do at the moment? Or should we make a business case? Or should we sell them? Or what do we do with it? That's something we don't know as, as farmers. So that's also a very interesting point, I think. Um, yeah, how, sh how should we handle all the data we have on our farm? So that's also a very interesting point, how to share them or how to handle them or what to do with it. So several very interesting points. And um, even the apps, I saw the, well, the, 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 the thing you're looking for, the, the, the way you uh, demonstrated them is something that I, I thought, well, that, that would be something I can use. So. I'm very impressed in such a short time, uh, the ideas you showed here. Yep. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, you can, uh, skip back there. okay. Uh, our next jury member knows a lot about a lot. Uh, he can code in many, many different languages. He knows investments, he knows startups, but maybe he's a bit of an outsider in agriculture. He actually knows some of that, that as well, but uh, I'm looking forward to hearing his perspective. Please, Ethan, take the stage. Welcome. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, cool that you guys were able to do something so fast. Uh, there's a lot of questions still kind of, I'm curious to know, you know, more about the parameters and I'm sure it's really hard to, to do something and really understand what you're doing in such a short amount of time. Also the fact that you were able to break up um, the work into teams and kind of even, even the actual um, cleaning of the data, having more than one person working at it at the same time, that's not easy. You have to synchronize between yourselves. So working together is, is it's good to see you guys working together and being able to kind of divide and conquer in terms of what needs to get done. So that's impressive. Um, yeah, uh, pretty much cool. <laughs> so um, it's, it's nice to see you guys kind of getting involved with um, the agriculture scene. There's a lot to be done. I think there's a lot of potential in terms of the, the you know, um, in terms of connecting uh, entrepreneurs to the uh, agriculture scene, it's not as cool sometimes, but uh, I think there's a lot of added value to society to, to connect to the agriculture scene. So this is it's good to see you guys uh, involved and hope, hopefully you enjoyed making the cows happy or thinking about happy cows and uh, the farmers as well. So thank you guys very much. Thanks, Ethan. And our final jury member, a uh, bit of a data guy himself as well, used to work at the Dutch Agricultural Economic Institute, is a scientist, uh, a professor actually, but currently the director of agriculture for Rabobank. Uh, Ruth, please join us on stage. Well, okay. Thank you. Uh, I completely agree with, uh, with the nice words from the other members of the jury that in such a short time, that you were able to make a presentation, do the first analysis. And I know from my own uh, experience, uh, which is uh, dates back uh, a while ago, but still the how when you have noisy data, that is very difficult to uh, do this analysis and to see how it uh, hangs together and to make uh, conclusions. But I'm convinced that, that in such a short time that you made already a first step. And I think it's clear that uh, in agriculture for dairy farmers, but also for the whole industry, that we have a long way to go, but enormous potential that we can, uh, can have with using in a better way the data. I'm thinking through uh, three lines, the, not only the farm itself, but the responsibility of the farmer also producing more with less inputs. Uh, if you have this insight, you know uh, ahead of time which cows are sick or maybe sensitive, risky to get sick. Eh? If you get a signal 
before it actually is that far. It saves you antibiotics. It uh, adds to the societal acceptance of the sector because they added up and also to uh, add to a kind of uh, competitive sector in Netherlands, in Europe and in the world. Uh, it is the way that we have to go, that you're using the inputs more efficiently, better animal welfare, nicer way of farming, because also farmers don't really like treat sick animals. They are for the healthy animals and also the technology you can use for this. And the sensor data are there. Further also to further in the chain, eh, if you think from the milk cow until it's cheese or it's consumed, that this data can be important. You cannot avoid that cows get sick. It's uh, biological materials at animals. So, but if there's a cow treated, that this food is treated well, it's not coming in the human consumption and all this data can use for this. And um, finally also, hopefully that uh, farmers, this kind of technology, if you match these kind of things to retail data and maybe to uh, personal uh, preferences of humans that you can also very dedicated produce for these markets. And now there's maybe um, also a disconnection between the way you operate in a farm but, and how it is sold on the internet or in, in, the, in the retail shops. But uh, if this uh, evolution uh, goes further, I think you can make a connection. And I'm pretty convinced that retailers and milk processors are going to look for farmers who are able to help them to do this and guarantee them better products, better animal welfare, better environment, but also in the end better prices for the farmers who are able to do this and are willing to do this. And I'm convinced that uh, like in cars, eh, the, the cars that are most efficient and uh, produces the lowest uh, amount of emissions, that are the cars with the most technology built in. Because the technology helps you with this. And uh, I think that is a, is a line that we should uh, explore further. And we need really guys who are able to convert this data into useful information. We need farmers who help thinking with the domain knowledge. We have designers to do it in a way that is accepted. So I'm really happy and really impressive that in 24 hours, or maybe a little bit more, that we can make this step. And we should certainly continue. And many more people can work with this analytics and design and so on. And I'm uh, very impressive and I hope that this is a first step of a much longer process to make it really happen on your farm. And looking forward that we all are invited to your farm and that you switch the button and, uh, and implement the technology and we can all see how it works. Thank you very much and congratulations on the group who did this. Thank you. Thank you, Ruud. Um, so, some new stuff. Uh, farmers meeting data scientists, developers, something we wanted and we did. Um, it was quite exciting. I just want to thank the Rabobank, the AMS and Lely for organizing this, especially the data donors for giving us your data to play around with, for giving us your trust. Also the team from Rabobank, thanks a lot. All the coaches, all the farmers for supporting us over these last two days. And last but not least, the participants, thank you guys so much for the last 24 hours, all the work you put in. So a big hand for everyone. <laughs> then I'd like to ask the judges and the participants to come on stage. We'll hand you your award. You can all be here. It's first prize. It's a little photo op. So Ethan, Mark. You guys from the Dabo team, you wanted to join as well, I think. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, the whole team should come. Yeah, sure, sure. And I will ask. Oh, yeah. Is it to hand over the award in a second? Yeah, yeah, we're just waiting for uh, one guy. <laughs> for the confetti. Yeah, okay, so...
Excellent. Well, that was it, everyone. Thanks so much. So there's um, one more prize left. We're having drinks at the Rabobank stand uh, in the front of the building. So you're all uh, invited to come over and have some drinks with us. Thanks so much.